So how are you doing guys? Uh, we're back here. We need to create. So go to um, your database, go to migrations, click on create QR codes table. We need to create your QR code, the QR code record. Now remember that this table we are creating is just a table for the webmasters to come to this platform and create a QR code. So once they fill up the form we're going to create here, uh, a QR code will be generated, then they can take that QR code and paste on their site. All right. So first of all, what are the things we need? The fields we need in this table, we need um, to know the user that is creating the um, the table. So we have um, user ID or the request user ID. We need to know this user. We also need to know um, what else? Uh, no, that's just it. So we now need to know the name of the product or website. So let's say we need to know a website, uh, but the website is optional. If you don't want to enter a website for your QR code, that's okay. So we can do nullable, which means it's optional. If you don't want to enter a website, good for you. Uh, we also need to know, uh, but the website is a string because they have to, they have to enter just the URL of the site. And what else are we going to take care of? We're going to take care of maybe the product name. Product name. All right. If you want to enter product name, that's your ish. I'm thinking whether product name should be optional. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be optional. All right. Um, what else are we looking at? Um, let us look at um, company name. company name so in case we're doing the payments maybe the company name needs to display for the users that are paying so that they know what they're paying for so we need to know how much uh, so we can do a float so if you're new to Laravel you might be surprised at where I'm getting all these things from if we go to Laravel documentation I'll show you so if you go to Laravel documentation laravel.com and uh, click on migration migration you click on the search and search for migration a drop down will show make sure you have your internet on this documentation doesn't work without internet so we're gonna find migration i think it's under databases getting started pagination migrations look at it on the databases so from the database migrations if you scroll down all the way down this is a sample file which is what we're doing here but i'm trying to show you a, a cool list of what we are doing here so when you come here available column times types you start seeing all the uh, things you can write so far we're just using two of them for instance we're using um if you want to find anyone uh we're using string so it's in alphabetical order e f g for geometry integer we used integer you see and then um, increments was used already so if you look at this place, increments, that is an auto increment for the ID field. And then um, string product name, company name. Um, so we want to do a float for company, for amount. So we want to do a float. So we go to F and check for float. Float will contain how many, will contain two parameters. So I'll explain what the two parameters mean. The two parameters simply means um, how many numbers can be after before the decimal point and after the decimal point so here we want two numbers to be there but me I would prefer to have like three three numbers after the decimal point and um, let me say four uh, because we're dealing with money here four numbers after the decimal point and um, eight before so you can do ten I usually do ten to but 10 for is okay, it depends on what you want. So we have company name, we have product name. We need we need product URL, but product URL will be product URL nullable. It will be nullable, it will be optional. But also we need um, something that is not optional, which is the callback URL. Callback URL. 
callback URL is a URL, the website that after the user has made the payment, where do we redirect the user to? You understand? We need where we can redirect the user to. So that's what we call callback URL. And um, what else do we need? So we need to know the status of this particular QR code, whether it is still active, what if the person wants to stop accepting payments. We're going to look for tiny integer t under t. I'm scrolling through looking for t s t uh, t y. So that's its tiny integer. So a tiny int can be either one or two, one or zero. So we take it tiny int. It should be um, status. I think I should put it last. Status. So tiny integer, you have callback URL. Uh, I don't know, but uh, maybe product description could make sense or not. Uh, callback URL, company name. I think company name should be at the top. I'm trying to arrange them well so that when we start creating the, the HTML front end of it, it will look cool. So the product name, I think the website URL should be first uh, product URL. Uh -huh. Product URL, callback URL, okay. And um, float amount. Oh. So we're good. So this sorts our QR code issue. Now we're going to do the same thing in the next two videos for transaction and roles.